Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and I am back with another fall video for you today. Um, my series is pretty much over with uh, video number seven. I am going to start incorporating some Halloween because it is September, so it's time to get your spooky craft on. So let's just get started with that. Um, I have three pieces to show you today, one that's considered fall and then the other two are definitely Halloween. We are going to start out with these beads from Dollar Tree. I'm showing you the tumbling tower blocks and the paint marker or the furniture marker. We're not going to use that. I will be using my Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream, Folk Art in Nutmeg and Pueblo. I will also be using some jute twine, some scrap fabric, and this really pretty ribbon. Um, the ribbon, I think, is Joann's. The fabric is from Dollar Tree. Everything else I've talked about is from Dollar Tree. Of course, you know that crate is a Dollar Tree crate. And we have some cardboard. I will be doing some hand lettering. It's still early yet, you guys. I'm trying to get my coffee in, as you can see. So I did six triangles. You can do as many as you want. The amount of triangles will determine how thick your slice of pie is. Yes, we are making pumpkin pie. And is this my favorite of the three that I'm going to show you today? It absolutely is. Hands down. So cute. And I love it. So I got my six pieces cut out. And I'm just going to hot glue them together. I'm just going to stack them. You can do more. You can do less. It is totally up to you. This is so cute and easy. And I hope you guys give it a try. So now that I have my pie slice all put together, I was thinking that I would just go ahead and paint the entire thing, but that orange fabric caught my eye and my little fabric stash, and I was like, oh, I have to use this. This is beautiful. Just the color is so pretty. So I am going to just rip a piece of that fabric, just make your little slit, and then rip it down because I want those frayed edges. I want rustic as much as I can get. So I'm going to take that fabric and just go around the edges of that cardboard. Yes, I could have painted it, like I said, but with all the holes and everything in that cardboard, it would have been hard to really get a solid look. And this fabric is perfect. So I'm just going to hot glue that all the way around. You guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video today. You guys have been fabulous absolutely fabulous you have shown up and showed out on every video that i've put out for the fall series you have commented you have liked you have shared and my heart is full thank you so very much you are a blessing to my channel and to my life and i'm just grateful for you thank you for being here you guys are my ride or dies you know what that means you've been with me throughout my entire journey and thank you and welcome to all my new subscribers, you guys, I just, if I could hug you, I would. Thank you and welcome to Dee's Cute and Crafty. I'm so happy you chose this channel. I hope you sit back and, and stay a while and like what you see and share it with your friends. So now that I've got my fabric all hot glued on, I am going in with that Pueblo by Folk Art. And I am going to give this cardboard a really light coat. You don't want to do too much because cardboard is absorbent and it will make your... Um, cardboard kind of wonky so you don't want to add a lot to it this color is perfect for anything pumpkin or pumpkin pie or sweet potato pie if that's your thing because it definitely is mine but um, this is a perfect color for that so I'm going to take seven of these brown beads and I'm going to string them on the twine and that is going to be the crust of the pie I did show you the tumbling tower blocks because Two of those would have fit here as well, but I like the beads better. And I'm pressing too hard and they all fell off. So we have to start over. Get them right back up there. Line them up. Make sure they are sticking. And then I'm going to cut off the extra jute cord. This is just cute. This is cute all by itself. Can you imagine making a whole one and then taking that slice and having that slice out? That would be cute too. That's food for thought, maybe. 
So now I'm going to go in with this folk art in the color nutmeg and I just had a little bit left in the bottle so I put quite a bit of water in here which is perfect because it's giving me a stained effect which you know if you craft a lot or you know you might know you might not know but I think everybody kind of knows you can take paint and add water to it and get a more stained light look and it dries a lot quicker. So if you're down to your last little bit of paint and you still want to use it add some water to it make a stain now I'm going to go in with my chiffon cream and I'm going to do the center of my book stack in that color as you can see the two outer edges top and bottom are in that nutmeg and I'm doing my hand lettering I am writing fresh baked pumpkin pie and I started with the Dollar Tree white marker and it wasn't giving me the depth of color that I want. It was still kind of faded looking and of course you can always see the pencil marking through it. I always pencil my stuff first and then I go in and I use my marker or paint or whatever to go over it. So I am going to go in with that chiffon cream and darken that that white marker up because it just wasn't quite what I wanted. And I'm going to take my black sharpie and I'm going to write pumpkin on the chiffon cream and here it is just kind of looking for placement setting that pie up there and now I'm gonna wrap my jute cord around the box about seven times or so you wrap it as many or as little as you prefer I'm gonna leave myself some long strings because I want to tie my ribbon and my fabric onto the jute twine Now when I first tied it on, I realized that the fabric and the ribbon were longer than I wanted for this box. So I untied it, I cut both in half, and then put it back on. This one is simple and easy. I love it. I love the look of it. It just gives me all the feels, all the vibes. And it is perfect for that tiered tray that we just made. If you guys haven't watched that video, series number seven where I did the fall pumpkin tiered tray and then I did all of the little pieces that go on the tiered tray. If you have not watched that video, what are you waiting for? It is so cute. You're gonna love it. Go check it out. So I'm trying to decide which button, black or orange. I know orange pops more, but the color of the orange button is a little bit off from the color of the pumpkin and the ribbon. It was a little too bright. So I opted to use the black and it's perfect. So we're just going to put our piece of pie down on top and this little beauty is ready to be displayed. And here she is, my absolute favorite. It's my favorite because I love how the pumpkin pie came out, you guys. I've made book stacks before. Um, so, you know, you guys have seen them. I've done bumblebee and different things like that. But this one is so cute. That pumpkin pie came out really cute. And it is, hands down, my favorite. As always, I'm going to need you to comment down below. Let me know which one's your favorite of the three that I've made today. I would be so glad to hear from you in the comments. And we're moving on to DIY number two. This one doesn't really have a lot of parts to it. I have one of the 12-inch chunky wood slats. I've got some raffia in black, orange, and that natural color. We're going to use the natural. I thought I might use the other two colors, but I'm not. I'm using my Apple Barrel in matte white, my Hello Hobby in black, and my Folk Art in the Pueblo. I've got some moss that I'm going to use. I have the reindeer moss and the Spanish moss, a little bit of each. And then I've got these twigs that came in the moss, and I'm going to use one. I'll be using that small twig for my pumpkin stem or peduncle which is what it's called so I'm going to start out by taking my sticker off of my again the wood slat is 12 inches long we're going to cut it into three pieces I did that off camera at with my miter box um, my miter box saw and I cut it into a four inch pieces since I needed three and the chunky wood slat is 12 inches three times four equals 12 so three pieces, four inches a piece. So 
So here is what I ended up with. You see me using one of my Dollar Tree whittling tools to put some lines in this wood slat. That one will be the pumpkin. All I did was cut the edges off, cut the corners off of one of those pieces, and I sanded it out with my big electric hand sander so that it would round out. And then on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the um, cat, his ears are a little wonky, I know, but listen, <laughs> I am cutting this stuff by hand, you guys already know. And so using your miter box saw to get a V shape out of a small piece of wood like that, it ain't easy. So he got some wonky ears, but that's okay. I feel like it just gives him a little bit more character. So we're going to get the face on the ghost just using a Sharpie after I paint the ghost in the white paint and the pumpkin in the orange paint and the cat in the black paint that I showed you at the beginning of this DIY. I just used my Sharpie to put on the ghost face and then I used that white Dollar Tree marker to put on the cat's eyes. And I am going to make his whiskers out of some of that neutral or natural color raffia. I had the orange and the black because I thought I would use it on the pumpkin, but I opted for the moss instead. <clears throat> So I'm just going to hot glue his whiskers down. And then I will um, get my pumpkin going here in just a second. I'm going to take my awl, which is that little sharp pointy tool with the orange handle. I'm going to make a starter hole in the top of the pumpkin. Then I'm going to take my screwdriver and make it a little bit bigger so that my little stem will fit down inside. Gonna add some hot glue and put that stem right back down inside the hole. And then I'll add my moss. A little bit of Spanish moss, a little bit of reindeer moss. And this will be done. These three pieces are gorgeous on their own. Again, to go on your tiered tray. But I decided, which I didn't show you here, I decided to go ahead and wood glue and hot glue the three pieces together so that they stay together as a set. You don't have to do that. You can leave them all separate, but I wanted them to be a set that stayed together. So I hot glued them and wood glued them and they still fit on the tray just fine. That tray that I made is good size. And they're done and ready to be displayed. How cute is that? That cat kills me. Oh my goodness. I love him. I am telling you, crafting right now, this season, um, Halloween, fall, Thanksgiving, Christmas, is just a whole vibe for me. I love crafting at this time of year. I love crafting whenever, honestly, Easter. Um, but this is just, I love it. I love it. Anyway, moving on to DIY number three. I digress. You're going to need a piece of black felt and you can see how thin it is that came from dollar tree i have some scrap ribbon and i used a piece of um butcher block paper or just craft paper to make my ghost template because yes we're making a ghost and we're using one of the dollar tree chamois quick and easy now you guys can go to your sewing machine and sew this god bless you for those of you who have sewing machines and you sew oh we're using some batting well you guys figured that out because it's a ghost you got to kind of stuff it it's a ghost pillow. Um, you can use your sewing machine. Absolutely. God bless you. I don't own one because I just love doing things the hard way. <laughs> so I will be hand sewing this. And if you don't want to hand sew, of course, you can hot glue it. I just didn't want to hot glue it because the fabric is so fuzzy. And I just thought it would make more of a mess. It would be more of a hindrance than a help. So I didn't, I didn't want to do it. So I'm taking my template that I drew out on just some brown craft paper and I pinned it to my chamois and then I traced around it. Now I'm going to take that off and I started to cut it out and then I said, nope, don't cut it out, pin it back down because I do have it folded over so I can cut my two pieces at once and I don't want it to shift. So we're going to pin that back down and then I'm going to cut it.
This one was quick and easy and inspired by a ghost that I saw on, I believe, Amazon. I won't swear to it because it's been a minute, but I think it was Amazon. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and get this hand sewn. It doesn't matter which way you fold your fabric because it looks the same on both sides. So you don't have to worry about when you flip it out, is it on the right side? It doesn't matter. So I just hand sewed it all the way around and I left myself an opening in the bottom so that I can stuff my batting inside. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. I wasn't too worried about what color thread I used because I knew that the fabric was going to be fluffy and you're not going to see it anyway. So I just used the green thread I had on hand, but of course you could use white. But again, as you can see, you can't see it. So I'm just going to take a pencil and kind of poke the fabric all the way through, giving my arms and my little top of the head and the little tail at the bottom some definition, being careful not to poke all the way through. I'm trying to decide which side I want the face on, which way do I want the, the bottom of the ghost to curl up, left or right. So that's what you see me doing. So now I'm going to take my piece of felt. Again, this is Dollar Tree felt. I think you get eight pieces in a pack. It's a multicolored pack. And it's super thin. But for this, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to see through it. So I'm drawing the eyes and the mouth. And I'm just going to get that cut out. And I'm going to hot glue his face on. I did three different kinds of mouth. I couldn't decide which way I wanted to go, if I wanted it to be long and skinny and oval or like a circle, like a O. I, I couldn't decide. So I ended up going with, I believe, the circle like a We'll see in a minute. <laughs> I don't remember. I did. I use the circle like a, oh, well, actually, it looks more like a gumdrop. Remember the gumdrops that used to be covered in sugar that your grandparents bought at Christmas, or at least my grandparents bought them at Christmas? They came in a, a multicolored pack of orange, cherry, lemon, and lime, and they were these gumdrops that had sugar on them. We used to get them every Christmas. That's the way his mouth looks to me. <laughs> anyway, back to the video. Um... I am going to make his bow tie. I felt like he was a, you know, a gentleman kind of ghost. I love Halloween, but I don't care too much for spooky Halloween. I like whimsical Halloween. I have done spooky Halloween in the past, and I will continue to do a little bit here and there. Usually when I do spooky Halloween, it's for someone specifically. Like when I did the Hocus Pocus book, that was for a girl at work. And when I did a lot of the um, skeleton stuff in the skeleton hands and things like that. That was for my daughter. So you may see a few spooky pieces, but not super bad, not anything blood and guts because I don't, I don't really display that in my home. But I do like him. He is cute. So I got his tie on. I kept the wire from the ribbon and I just used that wire to um, tie those pieces of fabric or ribbon together just to twist them together. And I decided at the last minute he needed a sign. So I went back and grabbed some of my Dollar Tree chalkboard signs from my stash. And I wrote, hey, boo. And we're going to attach that to his little hand. And he's ready to be displayed. He is so cute. And here is the final reveal of everything that I've made for you guys today. I love each and every piece that I made, but again, my favorite is going to be that pumpkin pie book stack. I think it's adorable. Again, don't forget to let me know which one you like. If you guys are enjoying my content, and I always hope that you are, please give it a big fat thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. They push my videos out a little bit more so other people can see them. It keeps me in the algorithm so you can keep seeing them. Don't forget to hit your notification bell so you never miss out on another cute and crafty DIY with D. And 
I think that's it, you guys. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. It helps my channel grow, and it helps me to be able to keep putting out content for you guys. Because if you guys aren't watching, why am I here? I'll craft at home, and no one will see it. I'll still enjoy it, but I'm so happy that you can enjoy it, too. All right, you guys, that's all I got for you today. I need you to be blessed. Stay safe. And until I see you in my next one, craft something beautiful today, you guys. Bye.